I, Tannis Coralie Leonardi, have done it, ladies and gentlemen. I have finished my first ever Jane Austen book, novel, story. I chose Pride and Prejudice, which was first published in 1813. This is a 2008 edition printed by Penguin Classics hardcover. And in addition to the book by Ms. Austin herself, there's like a hundred pages of commentary by people other than Ms. Austin. So it's something like that. There's like over 30 at the beginning and then there's like 60, a little under 60, so about 90 pages of commentary, which is well nice. I don't know. I'm personally, I'm like the kind of person that I would have just preferred the work of the person. But it, they said it's uh, derived from fr the f first edition of the original, the Jane Austen Pride and Prejudice from 1813, uh, which makes me concerned for what the word derived means. So this is going to be my um, notes from reading slash comments on, so reading slash book notes. For this first reading, I started the week of 20 November 2023 and I finished it today, Wednesday 6 December 2023. And uh, what was my motivation here? Well, I went back and watched the movie because I was thinking about my soulmate and her soulmates. I'm a love crazed 31 year old female living at home with my parents for over four years now after quitting my jobs and school and stuff like that. Um, rather spontaneously and abruptly. And um, I may have a suitor named Dominique Sabosly, and he is the reason I followed through and finished the book. So if you're happy at the end of this video with what I have to say, and or just in general that I have read any Jane Austen book, or and or Pride and Prejudice specifically, you can thank my suitor, if he comes to be my husband, Dominique Sabosly, who is older than me, by the way. He's Hungarian. And I'm approximately 31 years old age. So my notes here are, well, I based on the movie, and if I'm feeling ambitious, I'll go back and find the video where I put Pride and Prejudice, the approximately 2005-2006 uh, motion picture film starring Keira Knightley as Elizabeth Bennet. I'm, if I'm feeling ambitious, I'll put a link to that m movie watch list video that I made, my movie watch list. And I think it was, what, the week of 7 November 2023? So almost a month ago. And then I was like, I should read the book. I should go back and read the book. And it's 367 pages, the book itself, and then there's commentary before and after. So I just read the book. And I'll draw, my notes are kind of, it's an interesting courtship process between a Miss Elizabeth Bennet, who is one of five daughters. There's a Mrs. Bennet, a Mr. Bennet, who was formerly a lawyer, and as of the book writing is um, in what in today's terms might be called retired. And then there's five daughters. The eldest is Jane. The second born is Elizabeth. Then it's like, was it Mary, Kitty, Lydia? And their last name is, surname is Bennet. And so there's a little bit of, um, and they're English by ancestry. And I am English by ancestry as well. Ancestral origins, just like the characters and just like the author, J uh, Jane Austen. And I too, uh, so Elizabeth Bennet is an interesting one because I'm the second, I'm in a family where there are only female daughters. So multiple daughters, as in two or more children, 100% of those children are female. And I am the second born. So Elizabeth Bennet naturally resonates, resonates a little bit in that way. Um, if you think there are no bad characters in this book, you are a character in this book named Jane Bennet. And that at particular aspect of her personality is highlighted a number of times. I previously said in my movie watch this video, uh, I think it was that one anyway, or it was when I introduced this book. Ah, there's a, two videos on that link, then the book, the video where I introduced this book. I will specify this is not personality type, this is falling in love type. And sometimes falling in love type is, well, 
ethnicity, culture, heritage, and ancestry, um, that kind of thing. So for me, this book is relevant, if none other than I'm similar to the main character. Um, but perhaps there is some cultural traditions carried on in my courtship processes. So Elizabeth Bennett and I, I've already described a little. I'm not going into explicit detail because this is the first book where I'm thinking about taking my hypothetical six year break from YouTube and I'm going, there's a 10 page a day approach to all the books I've kind of put in list videos already. And this is the first one that justifies potentially a five page a day approach instead of a 10 page a day. It's a meaty book with a lot of substance. Romance and drama novels these days are not like this. Okay, and partially perhaps that's because we share some ancestry, right? The author and I and the fake characters and I. Um, it feels like I'm going on. It feels like I'm talking about a drama book. Sorry. And uh, <laughs> not to hate on it. It was an enjoyable book. Um, the Jane Austen version, right? That's what I read. And... So she lives at home with her parents. She's older than some of her younger siblings. Her parents are retired with a like pension, um, which is kind of actually my current situation. She courts, she gets introduced or brought closer in physical proximity to this man, Mr. Darcy, who has a bunch of control freak women in his life, such as Catherine de Bois, who says, I wanted from him at a young age. He was from the cradle, from infancy. I said he is going to marry Miss Bingley or my daughter. And it's how shall be show so and his soulmate is Elizabeth Bennet. So you know how the story goes, kind of, right? This woman who's the pinnacle of a what nowadays, interestingly enough, is like mainstream United States of America female culture, uh, is should and wants drive everything, not like actually what reality is right so women will be like i want to be married to you, so and so or because i watched him at this concert he must be mine you know so they're carrying on the catherine dubois thing and this is a story about love overcoming all obstacles including spoiled brats to put it nicely and so um and the problem i have with people like that is somebody who wants something and wants somebody to get married to someone and have sexual intercourse with someone who that person does not want to, it is called aiding and abetting rape, right? So these are very vile, horrible human beings. The Catherine the Great or Catherine de Bois, it was the heir of Catherine, you know, kind of thing. And so as someone who has been raped, it's a huge turnoff, right? It, that kind of person was a, always a turnoff even before I was raped, but the I want something even if that person's not mine, right? especially when there's like sexual intercourse involved, that is called being a rapist, right? And having a rapist mentality at the very least. So very, 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 very bad characters in here. She's not the only one, but she's one. Um, and so there's, yeah. And then her, if we wanted to make another comparison, it's not a family one, but the last person I knew of English ancestry who got married before I moved back here in with my parents, was actually English. So the last person I knew was English by ancestry. It was not my sister. So August, September, October, this friend of mine got married. She's English. And it kind of reminds me, like, there's like this, the Lydia, which I think is like the youngest sister, married at 16. So, you know, teenage prodigy doing amazing things at a young age, uh, named Lydia. Um, she takes this man that, <laughs> that Elizabeth interest, uh, Bennett was interested in and runs off with him, elopes with him. And I was like, this same person who got married, it's not the same thing, but it's kind of funny because it rhymes in the marriage in like personal life space, possibly if I do end up getting married in my hypothetical wedding, my who and my wedding kind of situation of, she's the one <clears throat> that I pointed to the uh, grant fellowship proposal for, and she got it instead of me. I was like, uncanny valley, huh? Right? I point, <laughs> I, I show somebody something that they wouldn't have found otherwise, and they're like, <gasps> and then they get it, and I don't. Right? And like, and Elizabeth Bennett had something taken, and she didn't get it. That kind of thing. Um, it, it was not, uh, and that, per the man was Mr. Wickham, right? And I'm kind of, <laughs> but mine was not over a man. It was over, like, grant and funding, like, over $100,000. That kind of thing. But I was like, there's a rhyme there of, does somebody know their next line? 
by them show having like pointing something out to somebody else out of a place of love right it's a demonstration of love kind of thing um yeah so uh, so that was just the curiosity in reading this like am i next in line am i gonna get married um that kind of thing um yeah and then so she mr darcy and her have kind of an in-person courtship but not with any of elizabeth's friends external to her family which would actually be the same as me and my supposed lie he has had no contact with any of my friends external to my family same as mr darcy with elizabeth bennett so to be an elizabeth bennett type i would say no friends involved is truly like at the core of the relationship and the courtship and the marriage process for this particular couple which is like <laughs> rolls out what 98 percent of women in the united states of america these days <laughs> as being this type um and just based on their social life kind of thing um so if not more <laughs> yeah so it's a interesting thing a lot of people think like love this and like oh it's such a great book and i'm so much like elizabeth Bennett, and i'm like clearly you've never read this book to understand this book and like they'll be like i'm exactly like the person really if your friends are involved they you ain't if you're not living with your parents <laughs> when you go through that courtship process you ain't or we could take it even further maybe i'm not an elizabeth bennett falling in love type maybe i don't get proposed to here i'm married here right she was at, living with her parents retired so if your parents are still working it doesn't apply to you either um yeah like then I would really be an Elizabeth Bennet type. There are a few things where I'm not quite the same as her, though. Like, she is better than me or worse than me. Um, she, like, kind of slams Mr. Darcy in kind of an inappropriate way, including being like, well, maybe he's off marrying this other woman. I'm just kind of like, no, that's not something I would do, nor something I have done. And then, um, oh, and then on page 356, this is something that I, is similar. Uh, I know your disposition, Lizzie, which is one of her nicknames. I know that you could be neither happy nor respectable unless you truly esteemed your husband, unless you looked up to him as a superior. So a bunch of women get disqualified from being an Elizabeth Bennet these days because they make more money than their man. Right? Just super simple stuff like that. This is a dynamic in a relationship type where the man like for the woman to be stable the man has to be superior right it is a nature of the relationship and i am that type all right um at least i think so i'm not married yet we'll see <laughs> uh, or we won't see and i won't get married that kind of thing but there's a lot of i think wishful thinkers out there who are kind of delusional and deluded and thinking they are this person when their social life is in no place like Elizabeth, they have a brother. They have, you know, there's just like, if you're going to say you're exactly somebody, maybe just read the book, you know? I know. Anyway, Mr. Darcy, my biggest question from left from this book is he pays the fees for some people to get married. Is my just Mr. Darcy going to pay each of my parents or my each of the parents in attendance at our wedding if it comes to be? The $10 million, is my Mr. Darcy going to cover that $10 million? Um, he did that for a different wedding in the book. So would my Mr. Darcy, in this case, saying hypothetically, is a Dominique supposed to like pay the $10 million to each of the parents in attendance? So his dad, my mom, and my dad, tentatively, or potentially. Um, yes, so in that way, even if it does come to be, I'm not exactly Elizabeth Bennet in... Um, <laughs> Dominique's supposed to lie is not exactly Mr. Darcy. We are better and worse in our own ways. But this is my first reading, so it's a little heated and that kind of stuff. But I read it November, December 2023, and this is my notes and my perspective for this first time. Happy Wednesday, 6 December 2023. From me, Tannis Corley Leonardi, and this YouTube channel, Tannis Leonardi. Thank you for joining me.